Okay, welcome back to my channel and welcome to our weigh-in day. I told you yesterday, it could go either way. And I'm going to tell you what, this past week, I told y'all, whatever that last video I did, I start out good and then I screw up. Ever since whatever that day was, I don't even think I've hardly started out good. Well, I started out with my prep breakfast. That's good. The rest of the week, I ate like they was fixing to sew my lips shut. I'm just telling <laughs> It's ridiculous. You want to know what the weigh-in said? I weighed in at 332 3.4. For a loss of 6.4 pounds, which takes me to 44.7. So, it's not that full 16 from last week. I'm trying to balance my coffee on my D. Oh my gosh. I might just be crazy. Okay. But, it's a loss. All I can figure is with everything I ate, maybe my medicine's starting to settle in as far as fluid retention, weight gain. I don't know. I'll take it, though. I'm just not optimistic about it sticking. I'm just not. <laughs> the pessimist in me just says, but I am trying. I'm going to try to get my act together, quit eating all the extra stuff, you know. Well, I was sitting there. Hold on, let me drink from my Kim Bed Good Cup. I was sitting, and I got a stuffy head, so excuse the, the nasal talk. <laughs> I was sitting over there. Must have been yesterday or early morning. I get up, come in here, and I just start looking up stuff on the computer. And I just went to Google and typed in, this is what I typed in, why am I always hungry? One of the very first articles that came up were from that website that I get a lot of my information from, Healthline. It has an article, and I'm going to try to make this short because there's 14 points. 14 reasons why you might be hungry all the time. And I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of people say you're making excuses. I think there's a fine line between reasons and excuses. And I know y'all know what I mean. Because, yes, sometimes we do make excuses when the actual problem is not there. But when the actual problem is, is there, that's a reason. So I don't buy into that. Everything you say is an excuse because it is not. There are reasons for things that happen in our life and one of them is why we eat so much why why do we stay hungry the first one is not eating enough protein now i would try like i said i would try to make this quick you can go to healthline and look up the article and read all the um details but it is um, increases the production of hormones that signal fullness and reduces those hormones that single seek signal Hunger, I told you my head stopped up. Protein gives you a greater fullness throughout the day and has shown to show you give you fewer obsessive thoughts about food. So perhaps you need to add more protein into your diet. I know I do. Number two, we've gone over this in every in every article that ever comes across eating is not getting enough sleep. That is where it regulates your Ghrelin, I think that's how you say it. That is the appetite stimulating hormone. Lack of sleep raises it. So you don't get enough sleep, you're hungry. Maybe that's why every time I fall asleep, even from a nap, I wake up starved to death. Enough sleep regulates leptin, which is the hormone that promotes feelings of fullness. So sleep regulates your, your food hormones. That's what I, I call them, food hormones. Three, here, this is a big one, eating too many refined carbs. Those are your white flours, your sodas, your candies, your baked goods. Lack of fiber 
there's a lack of fiber in those products and they're digested quickly and that raises your insulin and we know the insulin leads to the um blood sugars rushing to the cell and then there's a blood sugar drop and then it tells you your body says oh your blood sugar is dropping you better go eat again so there's that cycle what I tell y'all a long time ago when I was doing low carb, when I eat that stuff, I want that stuff. I want more. So there's something to it. It says just opt for more whole grains, fruits, vegetables, beans, foods that are rich in fiber. Fruits and vegetables and grains is a, a, a common thing in amongst these, re, these reasons. Number four. Now here is a big one. Woo. Let's take a drink on this one. This is something I started changing when I went low carb. Your diet is too low in fat. You know when we diet and when we do Weight Watchers, we try to get as much fat out of everything because we got to get them points down to the lowest possible point that we can. That's just, it's just how we're best. That is just like the nature of the game. But then when you read things like this, fat digests slow and leaves you full longer. Studies showed low-fat dieters had more cravings for processed foods and felt more hunger than low-carb dieters. Because low-carb dieters eat the fuller fat because when they take out the fat, they usually add some sugar. That's just how it works. Good sources of fat that it says to eat are avocados, olive oil, eggs, and full-fat yogurt. Now, in my entire Weight Watchers career, <laughs> it was my career, I did not count avocados, and I did not count olive oil. And me and my husband talked about it more than once. Those are two super, super good for you, healthy fats to be held against you in your point. A lot, a lot, but I'm not telling you, don't do it. And then you go gain weight and you come back and say, girl, her father said don't count that fat. And look here, I gained some weight. No, I'm just telling you what I did. But the thing is, add some fat to your diet if you're staying hungry. you got to satiate yourself. Add some more protein. If you, know, you have toasted breakfast, put some avocado on it. Add that fat to it. And, and some eggs. And boy, that ought to hook you up. I know when I eat breakfast, if I don't have some eggs in some form or fashion, I'm starving in just a couple hours. It takes no time. Number five. Here's another one we always hear about. It's not drinking enough water. It says water not only promote I cannot talk today. Promotes brain and heart health. It keeps your skin and digestive system healthy. Here it said one study drinks, these study groups, one group that drank two cups of water before their meal ate 600 calories less than the group that did not. So I'm thinking maybe before I eat, I need to have me two cups of water to see if maybe that'll cut down on how much. Of course, I haven't been eating a lot of supper because I've been filling up <laughs> before supper even gets here. So, but that, that's a good strategy, um, to, maybe try if it's a low calorie one I don't think you're really going to gain anything but it, let's say you're going out to eat or you got some kind of high calorie or high point or whatever you're tracking coming up it might not hurt to give that little thing a try now the next one your diet might lack fiber fiber is slow to digest it influences the release of the appetite-reducing hormones. Hormones have so much to do with this. Soluble is talking about the two different fibers. Soluble fiber that dissolves in water is more filling than insoluble. Examples of soluble fiber are oatmeal, flax seeds, sweet potatoes, oranges, and Brussels sprouts. For your fiber, it says, eat fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, whole grains, beans. See, I'm telling you, those fruits and vegetables and grains, they're important. They are important. Number seven, 
you might be eating while distracted. This reduces our awareness of what we're eating. We talked about that the other day. That, see, there's a lot of these that they cross over because it's all related to the, the problem we have with food. Eating too much. Eating all the time. Overeating. You know what I mean? And then um, reduces our awareness of being full and how much we eat. So we, we're mindlessly eating. Like, I, I'm bad about making my popcorn then when I'm full, but I'm watching TV and I just keep eating until it's gone. When I could have been satisfied with half the bowl. Because sometimes it pops. <laughs> you can put the same amount of popcorn in there. Sometimes you get a little bit. Sometimes you get a lot. I don't understand it. But that's how it happens. So try not to be distracted while we're eating. We need to try to sit there and focus on our food. That's one thing I'm going to try to do. Is when I eat to sit at the table. Not to take my food over to the... Um, chair and sit there while I'm watching TV. I'm going to try to sit and have my meals at the table. Even snacks, maybe. I should have snacks at the table. Number eight, here's one that I don't understand because <laughs> it ain't my problem, but you exercise a lot. It says when you exercise a lot, you have a faster metabolism, so you go through your food quicker, and so that'll make you hungrier. It says what you should do is to eat to fuel your workout. Fiber, protein, and fat fuel your workout, and then maybe it won't um, leave you so hungry. I wish I had that problem. Number nine, drinking too much alcohol. Now, you can take a look at this because this ain't no moral um, judgment. This is just part of the article. It said it may inhibit hormone leptin when drink when you drink it before or with meals and that's the one that what we say leptin does tells you you're full something like that along the same lines it says you drink your calories and this is probably where um white watchers get its count and blended fruits as points which if I ever had had a smoothie, I didn't count it. <laughs> this is talking about liquids pass through your stomach faster than solids. To me, a smoothie is not really a liquid because it's, I think it's still kind of solid. You don't have to chew it unless you eat it with a spoon, which is crazy to me. Is it not in Weight Watchers? If you can eat it with a spoon, then you don't have to count it. But if you drink it, you do. Well, just eat your smoothie with a spoon. Technicality. So it don't make no, no sense to me, except for this, if you're drinking um, Pepsis, like I got the diet drinks because I just need Pepsis and I know I cannot keep the full sugar kind because I will go overboard on those. It, or, or juices or things, if you're drinking um, protein drinks instead of chewing, they're saying that it could leave you hungry quicker because that liquid passes through your system that doesn't really have time to digest like food and like the chewing it says somewhere about um i saw something about chewing somewhere it might be in, in one of the other ones but it says if liquid foods are a major part of your diet so i guess it's not saying if you have a smoothie for breakfast every day and you're satisfied and it keeps you if it keeps you full then you're doing what you need to do see these are guidelines these are how some people could still be hungry not that if you drink a smoothie you're automatically going to be hungry just some people that do maybe that could be one of the reasons why they're hungry just a little bit later then lemon is a big one you're overly stressed Stress increases your cortisol, and we know cortisol is the one that messes with your hunger and your cravings. We could do a whole video on how to relieve stress. That is something that everybody's got to figure out on their own. they got to determine how they can work on their own stress and reduce it. Twelve, and here's one that I know all too well. Certain medications. Now, these are some of the known drugs, not named of the drugs, the type of the drugs. 
that cause an increased appetite. Antipsychotics, antidepressants, mood stabilizers, corticosteroids, anti-seizure, diabetes, and some birth control. I got several of those in my stash. <laughs> so, these are things we can't control. And taking medication that causes uh, you to be hungry, that is not an excuse. That is a reason. And you, you can't fight science. You can, you can employ different techniques that we're learning along the way, but you can't beat yourself up over it if they don't always work. Because you have science working against you. That's the way I look at it. Then you eat too fast. It says if you eat too fast, it doesn't have time to signal the fullest part to your brain. Like your brain doesn't have time to get alerted that, hey, I'm full because you're wolfing it down. So oh, that's where it sets you. Slow down and chew. I read one that said chew your food 30 times. I would be worn out by the time I got there. <laughs> if I chewed everything 30 times. <laughs> Don't mean we got to swallow it whole neither. You know what I always raise my... <laughs> the way I raise my kids? Because I'm going to tell you what. I have a problem when we go out to eat, staring at people eating and chewing. I, oh my gosh. I've told you before, they told me they were going to sit me facing the wall just so I can't look at people, because I just can't look away. But this is what gets me, is people that load their fork up with so much food, they about have to get the jaws of life to get it in their mouth. <laughs> I can't stand that. So I raise my children, starting with RJ, and they'll, tip, they'll, they'll repeat it word for word to this day. I say, just because your mouth is that big, no way you got to put that much in it. <laughs> Bottom line. <laughs> then 14, the last one, it goes along with the medication, medical conditions. There are certain medical conditions that will cause you to have hunger. Hunger is a classic sign of diabetes if you're always hungry. Hypothyroidism, which is overactive thyroid, hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar, depression, anxiety, and PMS. So, those are reasons that, yes, we do get hungry. And if you got a lot of these that are working against each other, it is like fighting an uphill battle. <sighs> Raise your hand if you feel like you're climbing Mount Everest. My hand is raised. <laughs> but it said the bottom line is... Any of these situations that occur, if any of those apply to you, that signals you either need more food or you need better food. So you need more protein or more fruits or more vegetables because you need the um, fiber from it. You, of course, you need the nutrients, the vitamins, the minerals, and all that, which... Those are my problem areas, are the fruits and vegetables. I wish I really liked them because you can load up on those for little to no impact on your weight loss. That's how I see it. That's how Sue sees it. Comment below if you know what TV show that's from. <laughs> or you're not eating the right food. You're not getting enough fiber. You're not getting enough um water, which we'll put that in the food. You're not staying hydrated. So, that's what I have for you today. Those are some things I'm, I'm going to work on this week. I'm going to work on sitting at the table while I'm eating. I'm going to work on trying to get enough protein. i got to go back over my meal plan because I've, I've already had it done. I need to maybe make some adjustments just to make sure that I'm getting enough. I need to have more fiber. Oh, I can't do anything about medications. I just can't. So, I guess I'll just keep climbing Mount Everest until I get there. And if I hit one of them sliding rocks and, and go down, I'll just try to catch a foot in somewhere else and keep going. That's all I know to do. <laughs> y'all stick around with me. Y'all y'all don't give up because there's a lot of us that's struggling. A lot of us. 
and it is harder to get back on track, I think, than it is to get on the track to begin with. I think once you start, you're like you're going, and then once you get off, it's hard to get back on. I think because you have seen the promised land <laughs> of the cakes and the cookies and the, the fried foods and whatever it is that trips your trigger, you have seen it so it is hard to leave that old world behind and come back to the more sensible diets <laughs> good food bad food i don't care i don't care diet food is bad food <laughs> it is not my good southern food <laughs> and i know some of y'all y'all don't have to be southern, southern to have food whatever your heritage is that is your food. That is your comfort food. That is your good food. And so that's, we got to learn to try to fit in what we like in a way that we can put up with it. And that sounds terrible, but I just put up, I, I'll just be honest with you. I just put up with the things that I lighten up. I, I don't love them. There's a few things that have worked out and I'm like, oh, you know, that works out. That's not too bad. But then there's a lot of things that I, just, I don't love it. But what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? <laughs> oh, I'm feeling punchy, I think. Okay, well, that's all I know today. <sighs> yeah, pretty much. So next next time I see you will be tomorrow on my meal plan and grocery haul. So I will see you then. <laughs>